everyone, welcome back to Touch Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do an in-depth sniff post-burn candle review of the Goose Creek Candle Company Hocus Pocus 2 Disney Partnership trio of scents here. But first, if you are new to Touch Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance and home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. Lots of ways I go about doing that, but if you want to learn more, you can check out my website at touchthefiretwice.com for more of what I do, why I do it, how I do it. But today I want to dig into this in-depth sniff post-burn candle review on these three Goose Creek candles. Before we dig in, I will say that Goose Creek did send me these candles for reviewing purposes. I was not compensated for them, though they did gift these candles to me to review. And as always, these are my opinions. They've not been influenced by the fact that these were sent to me for reviewing purposes. And this actually is my first Goose Creek candle company candle uh, experience that I've had. I've not perched them or sniffed them even before in the past but they reached out and said they wanted to send a couple of the candles from the Hocus Pocus 2 collection. And I was like, you know what, let, let me give it a shot. And I really was excited about the fact that it was Hocus Pocus 2. Now that sort of branding for a candle really doesn't matter because we're not burning from a merch perspective or like, you know, a, a product tie-in perspective. It really is the quality of the burn and most importantly, of course, the fragrance. So for me, these do lean, you know, more towards sort of the novelty side of things when it comes to that. But I will say I really do love Hocus Pocus. Um, I actually have really great memories from when I was a kid, Hocus Pocus, the first one came out back in 1993. And I specifically remember looking up, you know, movie listings in the newspaper because listen, Gen Z, we used to have newspapers where you would look up your movie listing or even some call and just listen to a pre-recorded message and be like, oh, let me wait. Let me get to the movie that I want. Let me get to the movie. Oh, it's playing at this time, this time, this time, this time. And if you missed it, you got to listen to it again. Or again, look in the black and white newspapers. Uh, and I remember seeing, I think, an ad for sort of a sneak peek preview of Hocus Pocus where it was playing, I don't know, three weeks earlier than the official release date at some movie theater, probably 45 minutes out of the way from where I grew up. And my dad took me there and we saw it. I remember at the end, there was someone from the theater that was handing out the like, complimentary buttons like a square cardboard pin like you would wear just kind of the movie poster for hocus pocus of course love the movie love the i mean bet midler kathy and jimmy and sarah jessica parker in this ridiculous but fun halloween movie i loved it when i was a kid i think it's kind of having obviously a bit of a renaissance a comeback a nostalgia factor for millennials and and really anyone who loves fun halloween movies but so the fact that it's coming back as hocus pocus 2 that fans have really been hoping for for years. And the fact that it's coming out nearly 30 years later, that's pretty wild that they're doing the second one that that far apart. And the other thing I was thinking too, Kathy and Jimmy, 1993 was her year because she had two classic beloved movies come out that year that she co-starred in. So Hocus Pocus, of course, and then Sister Act 2, because Sister Act 1 came out in 92, Sister Act 2 came out in 93, a quick follow. And supposedly they're actually working on now a Sister Act 3. So, so funny, like that 30 year period uh, of of Sister Act and Hocus Pocus, both coming back into you know popularity in, in pop culture. Uh, but what a wild year to have such amazing films that she was part of within a one year period. It's just really uh, interesting and exciting from a you know, career actor aspect. But so all that to say, love Hocus Pocus. I'm really excited to see Hocus Pocus 2. Goose Creek does have this partnership for these exclusive eight candles in this collection. And like me, I'm assuming you will want to watch Hocus Pocus 2 streaming on Disney Plus on September 30th. Not even in theaters, Disney Plus only. So that's surprising, but also, hey, I already have Disney Plus, makes it easy for me to see it. When it comes to Goose Creek, I've never tried them transparently. I've heard good, bad, and in between. You know, there are folks who swear by the blends, especially a lot of gourmand and foodie blends they seem to cater to, uh, as well as, you know, the wide, you know, typical mix of home fragrance categories. And yet others have expressed quality issues that I've heard of. So it comes to burn quality, sooting, sort of dirty burns when it comes to that. So really wanted to to give it a shot for myself to see what I think. And there are eight candles in this collection. So I will briefly run through the five that I did not receive and then go deeper into the three I did receive. So they have Broom Squad, which is Campfire Marshmallows, Sugared Cream, and Cool Woods. Then you've got Forever Bewitching, which is Crisp Apple, Warm Caramel, Toffee, and Vanilla. You have Brew Potion, which is Patchouli Graveyard Mist, whatever that is, White Woods and Moss. 
You have Salem Forest, which is Cool Fog, Lavender, Sandalwood, and Bergamot. And then you've got Hollow's Eve, which is Warm Graham Cracker, Milk Chocolate, Vanilla, and Apple. And then the three that I have. Full Moon, which is a blend of Warm Waffles, Pumpkin Cream, Butter, and Vanilla. Halloween Night, which is a blend of Candy Corn, Marshmallows, Caramel, and Vanilla. And finally, Come We Fly, which is a blend of Fizzing Potion, Frozen Lime, Grapefruit, and Sugar. So. As far as the blends themselves go, I probably would have chosen different ones if I had my choice of them, only because I do enjoy Bakery and Gourmand, if you're familiar with my channel, but not always my go-tos, especially when it comes to sort of the, the waffles and the, the true, like, just candied, candy corn sort of style. Not usually my favorite. I probably would have gone for maybe something like one of the apple blends, even if it was a sweeter apple, like a caramel apple, or maybe one of the earthy sort of fog, mist, moss, patchouli blends, just to see. Those feel very Halloween for me. The good for me on these, and I will go into like each candle, but when it comes to the branding, for those who are fans of Hocus Pocus, Disney, the movie, the witches, <laughs> what have you, the, the design is very engaging when it comes to that. So you have here the label, the three witches, of course, the logo for the movie. And you'll see in a clip here that the moon here that they're kind of flying into in the night does have a nice flicker behind it when the candle is burning. So that is a really cute touch that really makes the candle come alive. So let's dig into the first one I burned, which is Full Moon, the Warm Waffles, Pumpkin Cream, Butter, and Vanilla. I will say it's annoying for a brand that has this much room in the bottom that they don't include the notes. I think I'm so accustomed to not all, but many brands, including notes on the bottom, certainly Bath and Body Works, Slack & Co Homeworks. So the fact that they don't, that I always have to refer to the website is, is kind of annoying. When I smell this one, and this goes for all three of the candles, and I will do in depth on all three, but what I find strange is I was expecting this to be very similar to Bath and Body Works candle as far as it's the market, it's the demographic, it's the price range, it's the literal, you know, I imagine materials they're using, very similar. They're clearly going for an identical vision when it comes to the three wick, 14.5 ounce metal lid there in the jar. But when it comes to the fragrance, there's something that feels very, I can smell it, but it smells very thin to me. And I don't think it's necessarily a fragrance load like the percentage of oils to wax issue because it's not that it's weak it's just that it's almost like it's very singular note or you know obviously when it comes to pumpkin and waffles and caramel and candy corn and marshmallows synthetic that's to be expected that's you can't do them you know with like the actual items that, so they are synthetic artificial fragrances and that's fine there can be amazing synthetic fragrances but it's almost as if they are thin where Yes, it's like waffles, but it doesn't smell authentically like waffles. It's kind of like you can tell that that's what they were going for when I look at the notes when it comes to warm waffles, pumpkin cream, butter, and vanilla. But there's like an odd sort of sweet base to it that is like a filler fragrance almost where I can get a waffle smell from it, but it's like one fourth of what a true authentic waffle smell is. Like there's the sweet batter, but then there's the toastiness. There's a little bit of the burntness that comes from it. There's maybe a little bit of yeastiness in a waffle. It's gonna seem a little bit warm, maybe a bit tangy, maybe a bit sweet, a little toasty, a little oaty. And this is just like, just gets you right in the middle, just a little bit of a waffle style fragrance. And that kind of goes for the others as well to where I really want an authentic smell, even if it's something as fun and silly as a warm waffle with pumpkin cream, butter, and vanilla. And where usually with like your Bath and Body Works and certainly with your homeworks, the fragrance that you're smelling itself, regardless of the strength, intensity, you know, fragrance load, percentage of oils, the actual blend is usually, in, in those brands, is usually quite on the mark for me for if it's supposed to be waffle, Granted, sometimes it won't smell like waffle at all. And I'm like, okay, this is just bad marketing. There's the wrong name on it. It's, it's, you know, it's not waffle. It's a baked good or something like that. That happens. But when it does smell like waffle and it says it's like waffle, you're smelling the multi facets of a waffle. Same thing for a jasmine or if you're trying to smell cedar wood. There's sort of like the scratch and sniff version where you're like, okay, that's cedar wood. And then there's 
a fully formed cedarwood fragrance oil, whether synthetic or natural. And where this misses the mark for me is it just seems like it doesn't tell the full scent story with the individual notes. So that's my primary critique on it. And when it comes to Halloween Night, which is the one that is candy corn, marshmallows, caramel, vanilla, I, it, I don't think, candy corn really doesn't have a smell. I mean, it smells like waxy and no, not even really sweet, just kind of waxy and, you know, a little bit of honey scent to it when you smell it in the bag. It has a flavor when you eat it, but pretty much just sugar with, again, a little bit of that sort of vanilla-like flavor, almost like a marshmallow style flavor, and maybe some honey. But you don't really get that in here. To me, I didn't know when I smelled this, I didn't, I couldn't pick out the notes other than it being super sweet. If you would have told me, oh, it's an ice cream sundae, if you would have told me it's candy, if you would have told me it's a cola beverage, I could kind of find any of that in there because it's it's not screaming caramel. I mean, there's caramel, a billion caramel blends out there. I've never smelled a caramel like this. Marshmallows don't smell like much. They're just like this, you know, puffed, whipped sugar covered in, you know, powder. And there's just something a little bit, again, sort of thin and a little sour almost to this for me. And I will say when I burned this one, I didn't get more out of it. Uh, so it, this one is not, I don't know if any other candy corn candle would be for me, but perhaps because when I think of vanilla pumpkin marshmallow from Bath and Butter, so it's very sweet. There's a marshmallow in there and it seems authentically marshmallow, lavender marshmallow. Also very authentically that gooey, rich, warm sweetness. And this just feels kind of cold and tepid to me. It just doesn't fit the bill for what the fragrance claims it is for me. And then the final fragrance, and I will get into the burn forms as well, on Comet We Fly. So this is the Fizzing Potion, Frozen Lime, Grapefruit, and Sugar. This is strong. This, you could sort of clock this one as far as like your fizzy lemon lime soda. Kind of think your champagne margarita from Bath and Body Works or sort of any fizzy beverage. Not super, super effervescent, but it does have that distinct lemon lime, tangy, but sugary rock sugar sweetness. Maybe a little bit of grapefruit, but very, very sweet. And the sugar. So I would say that that made sense as far as the scent. Not my favorite version of it. Again, it just seems very thin. The only, the, the only way I can sort of describe it is if you're listening to music, the same song, and you're listening to it in your original Apple iPhone or iPod white earbuds, and then you're listening to it in over the ear, warm, rich, full sound. It's like, this is only giving the, the mids, it's missing the lows and the highs in the same song. And that's what I feel with this, with these, is they're just giving me a thinner version of the fragrance. I would almost say I get like kind of a bubble gum on this, if anything. Yeah, kind of like you think of this, the Bath & Body Works bubblegum candle from years ago. A lot of similarities to that, like a double bubble bazooka. So that's on, on the fragrances. So again, I'm not sure if I'd be more enthralled or intrigued with some of the more conceptual blends, but I was disappointed in the actual cold scent on them. I will say for all three, or at least two of the three, the strength, once they were burning, was solid. So the projection, they really moved. Like, especially the one I burned the, the most was Full Moon, which is that warm waffles one. And when I lit it, I was like, okay, it, it, I, it smells like a waffle. I can get that in there, but I had to look for it. It wasn't just, oh, where are the waffles? It was like, okay, I guess that's a waffle. And it did have projection where throughout my kitchen, upstairs into the loft, it was moving, which is great for any candle to have that much strength and projection to actually move the scent through your home. So that's a, a big plus there is they really seem to have landed perhaps the right formulation of wax to ratio of oils. I just wish it was a more fuller, rounder fragrance oil itself. It can come off as a little cheap. And I don't like to use that word because there's that's such a potentially inflammatory word with demographics and socioeconomic status and brands and branding and the idea of mass market and mastige and prestige and luxury and all that. And I'm not trying to put that sort of thing on it, but it's just, is it authentic? Is it unique? Does it have a good burn quality? That's, those are the three things I want. And, but this just smells like a, a fragrance at least that you would expect from 
I don't know, a candle you'd pick up at Ikea or something. I don't know. Just like thin, 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 thin. Now, let's talk about burn quality. So as you can see here, because this is a soy blend, it's three wicks in your traditional 14.5 ounce jar, it has no problem pulling out, getting a deep, healthy pool, some dancing flames, maybe a little bit wild. There could have been more of a controlled burn. Um, of course, I do trim them after every burn. I burned each of them a few times at least. And the first burns on each of them were fairly clean, solid, good throw, not a problem. But I wanted to ensure that I was going to really give a true post-burn review. And I've heard that sometimes sooting occurs more towards the midway with gooseberry candles. So I wanted to go a little bit deeper. So you can see I went furthest probably with the full moon candle. However, on this one, when I went to do, let's say my third or fourth burn after trimming the wicks, once it was pulled out, it really started sooting. Uh, I tried to capture on video. It's a little bit difficult to see, but I have two videos here of two different candles where you can see some of it. On camera, sooting really just kind of looks like the flame is wisping up a little bit. You don't so much see the carbon, the soot that's coming off of it. Why do some candles soot? We know that certain wax, certain wicks will tend to create more sooting, but essentially what it comes down to, the science behind it is, if the wax is burning maybe at too fast of a rate, the wax melts faster and gives more fuel to the flame, essentially. The increased fuel means that wax is drawn into the wick faster than it can burn and react with oxygen in the air, meaning there's incomplete combustion. And then the extra wax that is unable to burn is released as soot. So that is essentially wax that is not being properly utilized. It's burning too hot, too fast, giving too much fuel essentially to the wick and the wax is just being thrown off as soot versus being fully combusted. So I did see that on the full moon candle, so I blew it out. And then I tried lighting the Halloween night, so the candy scent. And you can see here, I did, you know, this is the, the worst thing someone should do to their candles, which is b blowing it out before it's fully pulled. But this, I you can see here, it started on maybe the third burn here, pulling out, it was sooting and I cut it, relit it, it continued to soot. And at that point I just blew it out because I wasn't going to have the soot fly through the air just to have the candle pull out fully. It just wasn't worth burning anymore. So that's a disappointment. And then I didn't get much sort of any on the Come We Fly candle, though admittedly I did only burn this once, maybe twice. And so that is kind of it in a nutshell. So what it comes down to, if you're a fan of Goose Creek and you like their fragrances, I see no reason why you wouldn't like these fragrances. It is fun, the novelty, if you're a Hocus Pocus fan and you're sort of a collector of branded merch like that, absolutely go for these candles if you know that you're already satisfied with the types of fragrance blends and the burn performance of Goose Creek. These are the only three I've ever sniffed and or melted and burned, so your mileage may vary. There could be many fragrances that are fuller than what I experienced here and or have greater burn quality than I experienced, but for me they end up being a pass because they're just not giving me the fragrance blends that I'm most drawn to and looking for. And though there was some authenticity to maybe like that waffle note in some ways and a healthy projection through the home, could certainly smell it, the burn quality just wasn't there. And that's one place that I, I would rather have a candle that is a single wick that takes some time to pull out. You might have to baby a little bit, but you can get it there and you have a pretty clean burn with a nice projection, strength and throw of a beautiful blend, rather than a candle that burns hot, deep, fast, and soots. There's always gonna be some sooting, even if you can't see it to your naked eye with any candle, but these ones, as I had heard in the candle community, seem to be pretty intense with that. Again, my experience, your experience could vary. I am grateful that Goose Creek reached out and, and offered to send these to me. I'm glad I got to experience them, get the sniff on them, have the, the fun nostalgia of, of Hocus Pocus. I will certainly be watching Hocus Pocus when it comes out on Disney Plus, but I'm, I'm a bit disappointed with the overall performance. Again, there's some pros, there's some cons, but for me overall, I was somewhat disappointed in these candles. So that is my God's honest review here. <laughs> Again, transparently as a reviewer, it's difficult accepting fragrances or accepting sort of PR because I will not be dishonest in my reviews. I will always look for the positive, but 
I will not hide the negative. And you've seen that with my other reviews with Homeworks and, and other brands that I've reviewed. And it's, it's a bummer to have received something from a brand, which is generous of them to send. Granted, they're in it to make money and they're hoping that the promotion here will have you go buy them. So there's, you know, a clear return on investment that they're looking for and it's worth it for brands to do that, which is why they continue to do it across all industries. But it's just as, as a reviewer, as a person, it's disappointing to have to give a negative review. But again, it just comes down to, I have to be honest with myself. You know, it wouldn't be worth lying to, to you all or, or anyone else. Like I said, this is not meant to be anything against Goose Creek. Uh, they're very successful. Clearly they have people who love their candles. Clearly it's working for, for lots of folks. And maybe a different one would work for me. I Again, I don't write them off because a handful of burns on a handful of candles, it's simply my opinion and a discussion. And so if you have purchased Goose Creek and love them, would love to hear about it. Tell me what is working for you in them. Are there certain blends, certain fragrances that you see being really unique and authentic and wonderful fragrances that, that that you enjoy and have you figured out are there certain blends that do soot don't soot different formulations they use would love to hear it the good the bad the in between and i am again still grateful to Bruce creek for sending these my way if you have any questions please let me know and until next time take care